the Iron Prince news. Been quite a while since I made the video. When was the last time I made a video? Probably when I hatched the shiny Pichu. It's November here. Down under, of course. It's November everywhere. Difference is, down under, it's currently spring, turning into summer. And of all things, for like the first time in a long time that I can possibly remember, I freaking fell sick with a virus. Some virus going around me, the great Italian, I have to fall sick. But then one of my best bros, Andy, has also now got a virus, so there you go, and he's pretty tough and strong as well, so whatever, it's just a hindrance, uh, especially when it comes to work. Pain in the ass. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about what recent developments there is. So we'll start with, of course, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Super, Tournament of Power, Prolong as much as they can, milk the shit out of it until March next year. Apparently, yeah, apparently it's been confirmed that the whole thing is gonna get dragged on until March somehow. And right now we have an ass pull upon an ass pull as Kakara is fighting Kefla, the Patara fusion of all things between Cauliflower and Kane. You know, I did. Initially, I took a shot into cauliflower, right? As you've seen in uh, past videos. Now, I don't like the. I don't care. I'm not even monetizing this video. I just do this for the passion and the fun of it. I don't like it. Don't care about the bitch anymore. She gets eliminated, so beat. In actual fact, you should take the shot into Kaba. Because Kaba is Vegeta's disciple. Apprentice and previously he finally became Super Saiyan 2 caught up to Cauliflower who just an ass pulled Super Saiyan and then ass pulled Super Saiyan 2 out of nowhere. Draw, why did I even uh, stand up or respect that BS? God, Carpenter did it out of anger, really. Frustration, the need for it all. And Vegeta had some part to play into that. Yes. He knocked out the bloody one and opponent. Unfortunately, Frieza ambushed him, went to Golden, and uh, knocked him out. So Kaba got eliminated. Four remain out of Universe 6 Cauliflower, Kale, and two Namekians. Two Namekians that seem to be devious. Cunning and similar to Super Namex as such. Well, opposite to the regular Namex you know of. Majority in Universe 7, the Namekians are of peace as such. They don't create war strife. A very few Super Namex. Slug, who's not canon, whatever, or alternate timeline, if you will. He was cast out for being contrast to a regular Namekian. So these two Namekians are kind of like, one is like Slug, literally looks like Slug in terms of physi physiology, and the other one's like Piccolo back in the old days, ruthless and cunning and cruel. And, and they're currently fighting, of course, Piccolo, and go. So we'll see what happens there. As I said, Kakarot's fighting Kefla. Enough about that. Ultra Instinct returns as well. She pushes him so far that he reawakens it. Uh, an ass pull. Okay. As for Vegeta, finally he's fighting someone main. Topo! And he's got the upper hand on Topo. But then when the damn bitch is fused, Vegeta gets distracted. He sends the powers up, and then Topo blindsides and hits him away. And 
And then, so what happened was Vegeta topped on, right? They faced off, they squared off in the same episode of Kaba getting eliminated, of going Super Saiyan 2 and then get eliminated. Following episode, freaking Kakarot episode, Cauliflower Kale and Vegeta was not shown or seen at all. And in the following episode, finally we see back to Tobo and the results of that. Then, this last, the latest episode, Vegeta Topo. Vegeta is Super Saiyan Blue, still fighting Topo. But, and I, I was worried, worried and concerned. I, I, I could see this coming at some point before he did the same to Kekko. Grabs Vegeta from behind and it's like a stranglehold, right? And he did the same to Catwoman. And Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue, right? I think, I can't remember if Catwoman had used Kaioken to burst out or, or what, but when he grabbed Catwoman, he was a Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan 2 or something. So it doesn't look good, just damn it! And... Top was like, I'm gonna throw you out. You can watch the fight from like out of, out of the ring and whatever, as such. Because initially, Vegeta was looking at Jiren, who's just closed off and meditating, and he's like, Ah, I fought Kakua, I fought Kit, it's done, you know. And he's just like, Come on, I wanna face the strongest, I wanna see what he's all about, you know. Tobo's like, hey, you second fiddle, you know. Oh no, Tobo appears, Vegeta's like, I'm not interested in any second fiddle. Move out of the way. And then Tobo's like, aren't you second fiddle as well? So he insults Vegeta, right? Because Kakarot's the main. But Vegeta should just be as main now. For the show's called Dragon Ball, not Goku, not Kakarot, like Naruto. In fact, Sasuke gets more of a shine as such, even though that show is called Naruto. There's just as much focus on Sasuke. Anyway, besides that, Stranglehold. Vegeta elbows Topo, knocks him off, and he like, he throws him, right, over the shoulder, or, or punches him one of the two. Throws him and punches him or some shit. Boom! Top was on the floor. Flat on his back. So that's the end of that chapter for now. Kakarot Kefla, episode ends. Yeah, Kakarot awakened Ultra Instinct and he's dodging all the moves and the freaking attacks and all that. Kefla's powering up more. And Yada yada yada. Oh, upcoming episode, spoilers. Apparently someone will get eliminated from Universe 7 next. And I have a feeling it could be Android 18. Because in this episode, you Android 18 was shown in the sidelines. Apparently some explosion caused by Kakarot or whatever. Um her ankle. Got injured or something, a bruise, so she can't quite walk quite right or straight. And in fact, she's going to get attacked by someone, and Android 17 saved her, and he walked off again. So, my estimation is prediction is Android 18 will be the next one to go. I think there's some Android Android action coming up, but uh, not too certain. Uh, I think that's all I'll talk about Dragon Ball Super for the main meat of the video will be Pokemon. So, the last weekend that just passed in November 12th, on Sunday in fact, my two best bros and I, we went to see the Pokemon, the 20th movie. Yeah, down at Village Cinemas. I tried to go early to see if they had something and then they didn't have it, so I went to pick up my friends. I came back, back and forth, back and forth. Then I was told, oh, it doesn't matter. Even if it, 
the fear that sells out. It's like not unlimited, but more than enough of supply of the various item, right? So those fortunate of you that were able to see the movie relatively early, apparently here down under we had two sessions, one on a Saturday and one on a Sunday, 2.30 and 2.30 respectively. Those were the only two sessions, right? So you have a ticket and you present it, they give you Pikachu card. Ashes Pikachu. Is it focusing? Based on the movie. As you can see, the cat is the lo movie's um, logo, not the original L lead type. So, with it, not just you only get the card, which if you have it, Keep on to it because one day it can be worth a pretty penny. Not that I probably would ever sell it. Maybe my offspring or kids, if I have any, they would have the liberty to it. Yep. Behind that, well, it's covered like that. I actually put, I opened it and I put it in a, a plast, uh, pocket, plastic slip, right? So these are two in one. Is a code, it's a QR scanner, right? Where Ultra Sun and Moon, when it comes out, if you get the games, you can scan the QR code and you can get this very, this very same Pikachu in the game. With the Pikachu Z, I think. Yeah, probably, yeah, it should be. I already have it, but yeah. Pikachu Z, I was lucky. I chose to get the Alola cap in the end, in Sun and Moon, but I was trying to see if I got Kanto and Carlos, which I did, I even got Sinnoh, the Kanto one, ah, I was depositing relics, box full of relics that I bred, fourth one, random Kanto, right, Kanto freaking Pikachu, because I was asking for a male Pikachu, doesn't matter what level. Because it can only be male. Ash's Pikachu is male. In, as indicated by the tail. The tail is straight. It's not bent like a heart shape. So I got that. And I'm searching and seeking for days. For the Carlos one. I finally was able to trade a ho-ho over the GTS. I got the Carlos one. <laughs> and I actually got dupes. So I got two Cantos, two Carlos and a sinner. The Hoenn and the black and white, I wouldn't mind having them as well, but I don't really care. In actual fact, when I went out Saturday, I went to the city, I saw on Facebook One Stop Anime, have you heard of it? Here, if you live down under, in the city, on Birch Street, I saw what I believe that they had the Alolan Ashes Alolan cap, right? From Sun and Moon. <laughs> so I'll go there. And it just turned out to be like a miniature thing. I don't know what the hell it was, but I'm like, okay, damn, that's disappointing. But I came, I was there plenty of time because you've got to be quick because this stuff comes from Japan. I got a keychain of Pikachu, movie cat Pikachu. And I found one for Kanto, Sinnoh, and Carlos. So yeah, a total of Kanto, Sinnoh, Carlos. Four? Yeah, because I four or five. Because there's six. Like Excluding this movie one, there are six Pikachus. There's Kanto, which includes Johto, because Ash wore the same attire for both Kanto and Johto in the original series. Then there's Hoenn, then there's Sinnoh, then there's Unova, and then there's Carlos. Oh, wait, so one, Kanto, Johto. 
two whole, three sinner, four you know, five colors, six alone. Even though there are seven regions, like I said, Kanto Jodo included as one. Originally, the, the original series was going to end at Jodo anyway, apparently. So there you go. It makes sense why they kept uh, Ash in that original same attire for the two seasons or regions or whatever you want to call it. So, with this one makes the extra seven, the movie one. Put it there so you can see it. So yeah, I got them as keychains. Then, I called my friend, he wants Xenoverse 2 finally, got a PS4, and you know, he's gonna get it. And I was like, are you gonna call, uh, are you gonna go and get it in my local EB? And he's like, nah, I'm at my auntie's place, right? This is Teddy, mind you. Oh my god, okay, I'll just get it when I come back from the city, so I was planning to return relatively early. I was alone, none of my friends were there. Busy, sick, whatever. Went to EB and Swanson Street. Boom! They had Xenoverse 2, the ex exact same one, second hand, so pre owned for 42 bucks. Quite a bag. Disc is fine, no scratches, I made sure of that, so there you go. Didn't have to go back all the way to my local EB, which is not too far from where I live, so it's fine. Then I get a message from Andy. Oh, there's Mewtwo, right? Radiance. For Pokemon Go, mind you. Uh, but I'm like, EX, this EX bullshit, you know? You have to be invited, exclusive. You have to have done a raid in where they send the EX in order to have a chance of getting an invitation. And it's like, but I see it on the map, it appears on the map. I'm like, still I think it's an EX. But I'll go anyway, I'll check it out, just tell me where it is. I go, and I see the ghosts. So they still have the Gen 3 ghosts roaming around. It's interesting, I thought they remove it until they officially um, release Gen 3. Now they have this wizardry bloody go crap, like Harry Potter. So I was like, what the hell? Anyway. Ah, they could do better. That's all I say. I come across a random magic hub. And lo and behold, it's a shiny. And not just that, it's a male shiny. I have a female, I have altered them together as shiny queen. This one, I wasn't even thinking right, and I threw a Pokeball. I didn't even throw a berry, I think. And then, presto, I caught it in a freaking Pokeball. Whew. And it could be a ditto, mind you. Or it could run away, I don't know. But it was alright. Uh, it was in the green, so it was easy to capture. So that's it, shiny king, shiny king, shiny queen. I just need breeding to be implemented. Then I'll be set. Like I have male Charizard and uh, female Charizard. I am prince, I am princess, respectively. Ah, so... Yeah, so I went to the city for that. What I believe to be the cat. And it turned out to be completely different, so expect the unexpected. A relatively good day. Mewtwo or no Mewtwo. And the best of all... I didn't even fall or trip this time or some bad shit like occurred when I caught this shiny. So second shiny, two shinies on my Pokemon Go. Two Magikarps, one a Gyarados now, the other one soon to be a Gyarados. I have 165 candies and it takes one kilometer to walk so I have my, here's my walking buddy right now. Although you can use Gyarados because it still retains a one kilometer distance. Uh, how long is this video? 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, enough about that. Now we'll go to the anime. Uh, stupid luck and rock. But, Litten is sparring or training with the luck and rock. Despite, because Ash is all busy, attentive to Nebby, right? And ever since Nebby came to the picture, all the focus has been on Nebby. Like, Lycanroc had some shine or here and there, but Tycho kind of given a back seat. 
Lock and Rock faced off against Titan No of all Pokemon. The rematch against Gladium, right? Gladium. But uh, Lock and Rock got cream, so I loved it. Lock and Rock, the way it's orange and, and, and its eyes are green, but turns to red when it's furious and mad. Kind of reminds me of Kakarot. And, and Kakarot is a pun of carrot. So this Lock and Rock is literally the same similar color to a carrot. Oh god. But, so yeah, that happened. Lily, more development focus on Lily, which is good. She's my favorite Poké Girl now, yeah. Sorry, I think even more so than Serena. Serena will be second. A tie, close, I don't know. But, yeah. What was good? What was random, actually? Nebby teleported her to a Gladion moth because she had the desire. Nebby grants wish. If you have a desire to go to a specific place or spot area, Nebby takes you there. Senses what you feel. It is psychic after all. So, Gladion is in the cave, right? Titan Oil is there. Lily appears there. And Gladion's like, what the, where the hell did you come from? Titan Oil sees her and goes in front of her face. You know, if it's gonna attack her. Lily gets all freaked out, but then Nebby teleports her out of there, I think. And this is a major con. It results in Lily being reset. She is unable to touch Pokemon once again. She can't even touch her beloved Shirin, Lolan Volpix. No, none. Like, it tried to approach. She's like, no, please, stay away. So this leads up to, so that was 48, 49, I think it was here, Lily, Silvalli, Memories Reborn. Interestingly, the thousandth episode of Pokemon, as a series, as a whole, a thousand episodes. Whew. So not just the 20th like anniversary as such of it. So, starts off, Lily's running in her diary, like she's doing in the past episodes, ever since Nebby came into the picture. The uh, Aoife Foundation arc, or oh, I think that's what it's called. Um, she writes, a lone Vulpix trying to approach her. Uh, Shiron Snowball, in English dub. She's like, no, no, please. She's like crying, tears. So she's, she's been reset, reduced to how she was at the start of the series of Sun and Moon. Following up, no, not following up, the next day, they're at the class and everyone's trying to help and they're trying to support her and then he's like, come to me, you know, Snowball, or Shira, I don't know what to call. As long as you know it's a lot of ball picks, that's all that matters. Four picks leaps onto her. She's frozen in petrifying fear. Nope. So, end of class. She's gonna go uh, return home or something. But Ash decides to accompany her. And. They talk about some stuff, like, you know, Ash, Gladion, Ash tries to cheer Lily up, and like, say, oh, Gladion scared the hell out of me and all that, he really, really went all freaky, because Gladion, when he heard, like, like, when he saw Lily, and then what, the result, that she can't touch Pokemon again, he raged at Ash, because, the because Nebby, like, teleported her, right, and Nebby, semi, belongs to Ash, he's looking after it. I don't know if it's called it, it or him, it's a legendary, technically it. Although we know it's going to evolve into Sogaleo, which is the, a male, the male equivalent 
to the evolution and Lunala is female, sun and moon. Itohi, I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness, don't blame Nebby, it's still your fault. Ah, yeah, Gladian goes back to the hotel. He actually stays, not hotel, motel. Like, just like the games, he stays in the motel. The only difference is that he has no affil affiliation with Team Scar. None of it, he's got none, none of it. We haven't seen Guzma. We've seen Team Scar, but they've taken a backseat, major backseat. In actual fact, he thrashed them the first time we've seen Gladion. He thrashed two grunts and stuff, so it's like they didn't even acknowledge him or something. So he's not an the enforcer. I don't know what they're gonna do with Ultra Sun and Moon if it's gonna be the same or to, more towards the anime side of things. Like Lily, is she gonna have a lone Vorpix? She's showcasing the Pokemon in the poster. Oh, the poster, yes. With the pre-order, I already know that's a poster I'm getting. Yeah, I love it. But I wouldn't mind having the bloody... Oh god, oh god. Rainbow Rocket poster. May I talk about it later? Anyway. Oh, where's the bloody joint? Nebby teleports Lily to memories that she has, right? So she's been this area, and then that area. And memories start to resurface of her childhood, early days. She sees Lusamine was nice and caring right back. In actual fact, Lusamine in anime is not evil or has ill intent at all. Ultra Sun and Moon apparently she takes a chill pill as well. So. No, in actual fact, the main antagonist or whatever as such, the catalyst or whatever, is Faber. Yeah, Faber. He should have a German accent in the English dub. I can see that. <laughs> ah, Faber. He has Alakazam and Hypno. And Gladion challenges him. Well, because he wants type no. He's at the motel in his room. Uh, Blackie or Umbreon. And Midnight Like and Rock is what Gladion has. But they stand no match against the psychic power of the duo. Even Umbreon, who's a dark type, what? Gets thrown away by psychic? Uh, well, if you can use Miracle Eye, which allows you to hit a dark type, but that was not showcased in the anime. Anime logic, different to game logic, it's not the first time. Ash is renowned for that. So that happened. He takes type null. Gladion gets hypnotized, fall asleep, fall asleep. And then it leads up to the following day with Lily in the class. So, if I'm all over the place or the joints. Anyway, the main meat of the episode. Ah, side note. As I said, Litten and Lycanroc. <laughs> LL. Sparring, facing off, and at one point, Lillian gets all fired up and charged up, kind of like a Super Saiyan God. Ooh, launches at Lycan Rock and either the tail or some part of the bottom, right? Ah, fire Fang, I think it was. And the Lycan Rock is crying in pain. Ah! Uh, the duo kind of does really remind me of Kakarot and Vegeta. Yeah. You can guess who the Vegeta one is. And uh, Lin should evolve soon. I don't know when. Oh my god. Upcoming episodes. Sokolero is going to appear, actually appear. Ah, uh, okay. Gotta get through this. There at the lab, Aether Foundation. Down lower levels. Father sees it. What the? Lily is here. Did she remember something? Father's hiding something, clearly. He goes to Team Rocket. Hey, help me catch Lily, girl. I need to erase her memories. Things she cannot remember would be bad. Team Rocket, what? You want us to catch her so you can erase the girl's memories? Listen, like, we're still Pokemon, we do this and bad stuff, but even, our <coughs> even we have our limits. They 
throw their hats down of the Aoife Foundation because they were like uh, employers. Father hired them. They storm off. They want no part of it. Nebi or no Nebi. <sighs> Father's like, yeah, I'll do it myself. So he ambushes, knocks Ash and Shiron and Pikachu on the wall with the psychic power of Alakazam and Hypno. Takes the link hostage and goes around the corner. And just as he was going to do hypnosis to erase the memories, I don't know if he did that when she was a child as well or not, or other factors came to play. 